guys, and we've just managed to get hold of a Raspberry Pi Pico, which has just come out today, and we've managed to get one for all of us. It retails at about four dollars, or around three pounds sixty, which is a pretty good price. What are they, and how do they differ from normal Raspberry Pis? Raspberry Pis are designed to do things that most normal computers are designed to do. Well, they are normal computers, really. Yeah. Like, run programs so you can play Minecraft on them. Or other games. With the extra addition of the header so you can do electronics projects and stuff, which is super cool. Whereas the Raspberry Pi Pico is a microcontroller, which has a very specific function. The Raspberry Pi Pico does everything that the header does on a Raspberry Pi. So that's a specific function. So it will boot up a lot faster than the Raspberry Pi, since it has no operating system or anything like that to boot up. In my sister's voltage divider video, she used this Arduino, which is very similar, to display the voltage on this screen. So, if my sister takes the power out and then puts the power back in again, you can see it boots up almost immediately, which is what this Pico should do. So if we wanted, we could have used a Pico instead of the Arduino. If we could travel back in time. Yeah. And give it a try. Also, on your Raspberry Pi, if you wanted an analog input, then you'd have to get an analog digital converter for your Pi. But the Raspberry Pi Pico already has an analog input. And that's why I used an Arduino for that project. But obviously you could have used a Pico. Let's test it out. I'm going to plug this end into the back of my Pi here. And this micro U USB port into here. But as I do that, I'm going to press this hot button down and hold it. You can zoom in onto my Pi now. and keep holding it and boom it's up here and I can just let go so it's popped up here and here if you can see that and it's I'm going to open a file manager like it says so I'm just going to press ok if we can bring this over here we need to go to the website and hopefully it's got a shortcut here okay now it's at a website we need to get Micro Python, I think that's what it's called. So if we go down, getting started with Micro Python here, this one. Okay, and we need to download this UF2 file. Download that, and then we just drag it in here, and it goes. Now it's got Micro Micro Python on. Okay, so I'm just gonna shrink this because. We don't want that there. Now we're going to go programming and open funny python. Okay, now we want to switch to regular mode here. Okay. And then we need to close it. And then reopen it again. Do 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 do. And there we go, now we've got this toolbar here. We want to go run, select interpreter here. Now, can you click here? Now I'm looking for MicroPython, what's it called? Pico. But I don't see that here. So I'm just going to see if generic will go. And then try to detect a port automatically. OK. And it looks like it worked here. My sister's going to write a simple Python program to make a light flash on this. So I'm just going to write import. That's gone very long, isn't it? Import, um, then machine. Um, now this is just importing machine from somewhere else. So I'll just press enter. Okay, now I'm going to do pin equals and then... So I'm just setting a, ver um, a variable here called pin. And in that I'm going to put... Um, machine dot pin, sorry, um, and then in brackets I'm going to give it 25. These pins are all numbered so that you can connect up electronics, um, but there is no pin number 25, that's just this LED here, and it's sort of like a virtual pin. Dot pin, capital P, I N, dot out in capitals and this is just saying that this is an output not an input so i'm not going to be pressing a button or anything i'm going to set it and it's going to be an output so now i'm going to press enter 
Okay, now I'm going to pin dot value and then I'm going to do one. One is on and zero is off, so I'll do Wait, one. Yeah. I think we want to look at everything. Oh, yeah, sorry. I forgot to show you guys. Okay, right. I'll hold it for you. If you just have it, just show this. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to press enter now. Yes. Okay. And then it turns green. You can see that the light's turned on. And if you show here, um, now I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to do zero. And hopefully this should go off. So I'll press enter. Do you want to show me just pressing enter as well at the same time? It's gone off. Didn't want to bore you with um, writing the program. So it's just a simple program that turns the light on and then sleeps for half a second and turns it off, sleeps for half a second again, then repeats and repeats and repeats forever. So we're just gonna run it and then <gasps> see, it works. Now we're just gonna change this to, to speed it up a bit. We're gonna change it to 0 0.1. The delay is now 0.1 and then we'll run it and see, the light's gone a bit faster. <laughs> Quite cool. It's got 264 kilobytes of RAM. It's got 26 GPIO pins. And it's got three analog inputs. So this is going to be amazing for our electronics project. So it doesn't just light up a singular LED, it can do so many other things. We'll have a little bit of a fiddle around with it and see what's what. And then hopefully next video in part two, we'll probably add some more stuff to it and make it more interesting. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you're new. Have a good day. Bye. 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 Bye.